Thank you all for um, coming. Um, my name is Jin Kwan. Um, I prepared this presentation this week, um, a deep dive into computer networking for web development. This is a talk that's you know f open for everyone. I'm sure there, there, there are a plethora of people here with different backgrounds. I'm sure there's some very technical people in the room as well as some people here that are perhaps he out here out of interest, right? Um, I think computer networking is one of these topics that you know, it's it, 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 it's very very how shall I, how shall I say it? it's it's kind of nebulous. It it can be a little tricky if the fundamentals are not taught correctly in the beginning. So, uh, my goal is to just elucidate some of these ideas, um, and hopefully, um, you know, if you have some feedback for me, I would love to hear on um, what you think um, at the end. All right, so let's get started. Um, Okay, so about me, I'm Yin Kwan. Um, I'm a full-time student right now um, at Virginia Tech. Um, I'm in their um, online master's in information technology program. Um, I've been doing it for close to three years now. And, um, you know, I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with the school, very happy with the um, degree, and hopefully, I'll, hopefully, I'll finish soon. Um, I, 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 I've worked in many places, um, mostly like in DC, I'm grinding in like the public sector space um, for working in like government contracting, but most recently I was working as an engineer at U of Penn out in Philadelphia. Um, yeah, I've been a networking hobbyist for probably like the past 10 years or so. Um, I, something that I'm, um, you know, somewhat passionate about. Um, so. The first question we should ask is, um, I'm just curious, like how many front-end developers are in the room? Can you raise your hand? Back-end developers? I want to get in front-end development. Want to get into front-end development? Back-end developers? Yeah, it's a start. Okay, okay. Um, any, any, any DevOps engineers? Okay. Marketing, okay, okay. Um, any data engineers or data scientists? Okay, I'm just curious. Um, about yeah, yeah, that works too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the first question is: Should you even learn about networking? Networking, right? Um, should you, um, you know, is it even that important? Well, let, let's take a look at it. I mean, for for someone like a like a front end developer, right? So this website is very useful. Roadmaps.sh. Um, it gives you like for whatever type of career that you want to get into to tech, it gives you kind of like a layout of the land, like what you need to do to get into the field. You know. So specifically for front-end development, I mean, you see things such as, obviously, you need to know about HTML and the internet, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, maybe some version control, GitLab, uh, GitHub. Um, you see some package managers right here, NPM, Yarn, et cetera, um, linting, et cetera, and, and as well as CSS uh, styles or whatever. But you don't see too much networking, you know? You don't see too much front end, um, maybe some web sockets, that's networking, but you know, th that, that's for front end, okay. But now, now you have to think about it. To be like a full stack developer, what about, what about say for like the back end, right? What about say for like the back end? Um, let's, let's take a look at back end development for quickly. So now let's take a look at back end development, right? And it's, it's, a, different, it's a different layout. Um, Obviously, you still need to know about the internet. You need to know some programming languages, um, GitLab, GitHub, etc. Now, now there's a database component that becomes, you know, very big. Um, not not just relational, but also NoSQL as well as um, APIs, obviously. But then you get down to some other other things down below, such as Kubernetes and etc. Et but then you start talk, seeing stuff like web servers. That's all networking, right? And networking is one of these things that you don't you don't see it that's a, a, as being needed. Like say, I need to know networking specifically, but it 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 it, it, it kind of covers everything. You know, the computer, the internet runs on networking. So the more you, technically speaking, do you know it? Need to know it? No. But will it make you a better developer in whatever you're trying to do? The answer is yes, 100 percent. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to go over some fundamental concepts, TCP, IP, IPv4, um, V6, subnetting, which is, which is it's tough, um, routing, TCP, UDP sockets, as well as DNS. Um, I don't know if I put a slide in for HTTP, but, and then maybe some 
networking through the command line interface as well as networking with Python. I think I have like an example. Um, and I want this session to be kind of interactive, um, you know, so you can stop me at any point and, um, you know, um, if you have any questions, of course, but if you see something wrong with my slides, you can also point that out too um, in real time. Um, so let's, let's go over some of the fundamental concepts. Um, um, let me go back to full screen. Okay, so so we, we have we have um, two models that I want everyone to um, know. Is is one of them is called the open system open system interconnection model, the o OSI model, which was developed in the late it was developed in the late seventies and published in the early eighties. It breaks down a computer network into seven different components: the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, the transport layer, the session layer, the presentation layer, and the application layer. It's all built on in computer science, what's known as abstractions, right? It goes from the hardware, which is the physical layer, all the way up to the application layer in these seven different steps, you know? So I'll say it again, physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, application. It's, it's, really, hard to, it's really hard to like memorize, and memorize them all, but the, the mnemonic for it is like, a, I think I saw in a class that it's like, it's like, please don't, Please do not throw salami pizza away. Like that's that's like a way that you can memorize, like or at least like you know get a sense of like memorizing the seven layers. But each layer builds on top of each other, so that at the at the physical layer you're talking about bits. At the data link layer you're talking about probably like 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 frames. You know, you're talking about bits, frames, packets, set, whoops, segments as well as data, which is what most web developers work with, right, like APIs, um, things of that nature. Um, but then the, o the OSI model is great, but, you know, the more commonly accepted model right now in, t in today's world is the TCP IP model. You know, it it's basically two different ways of looking at the same thing. Um, basically, you know, look, look what's going on here. The network, the, the the difference is that the TCP layer has four different layers, network interface, the internet, the transport, the application. It basically packages the data link in the physical layer and calls it the network interface. The network layer, they, they made a new word for it, the internet, and then there's the transport, moving things around on the internet, as well as the application, which is what most web developers work with, right? Um, so so th this is hardware, this is pure and straight up hardware, bits and frames, Internet, internet is run by packets, you know, it's run by packets. The transport layer is, is, you know, using TCP and UDP to move packets around on the internet. And of course, I think most people understand data, right? Any questions? Yes. Yeah, I do have a question. Um, Please. We just had this long discussion about what a redirect is. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a front end person has a different idea of it for a back end person. Uh, I don't know. There was a big discussion about what it was. A, a redirect? A redirect. So when somebody types in a URL, uh, it takes you to a different one. Um, um, like, like, like yeah, a. It's like mystery behind it. <laughs> you're, you're thinking. When you say redirect, like a front-end developer will probably think of that as like an API call. I, I think that's what the, a front-end developer would call it. Not, they wouldn't use the term redirect. They may use the term such as an API get request or something like that. Uh, I think yes. 301 Yeah, I think 301, 302, which would be application layer, like Apache or Nginx redirects. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm taking down an old website, and, and it has a specific URL. Yes. Um, I want the new URL when somebody the key's in the old one, it takes them to the new one. That's oh. what the argument was, or that's what the task was. Okay. But I couldn't explain it to the back-end people. <laughs> okay. But I wanted, and it was just frustrating. So, I okay. don't know, I think it was just had to do with the terminology I was using. Yeah, yeah, um, um, I'll follow up with you after, after okay. the, um, Sounds good. thank you so much. Did, any, any other questions here before we move on? Okay. All right. So now, now we're going to get to the um, real technical stuff. This is this is a deep dive after all. I, I'm not here to just give general stuff. I'm I'm talking about like the hardcore technical um, engineering things. Um, so so we have an IP address, right? IP address. If you break it down, is 32 bits. 32 bits. You know, it's broken down into four octets, which are um, um, each octet is eight um, eight eight bits. You know, eight bits. So so so. Um, 
there, there's, a, there's a decimal notation of it as well as a binary notation of it. You know, so let's say for the IP address 18, 154, 277, 99, we, we, we're all familiar with base 10, right? You, you know, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera. So it's 18, as you can see. But you can also break it down into binary. Um, so now, now, now there's I, that's IPv4. Now there's IPv6. Well, what's IPv6? That's 128 bits. It's broken down by hexadecimal numbers, which it, this notation is called colon hexadecimal, and it's base 16, base 16, you know? So, um, and, 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 so and so in total, there's, um, I think there's 16 here, 16, and then um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 16 times 8, I think, is 128. And so um, you can write... When, when, when you, whenever you see this notation, these are actually hexadecimal numbers, and that is, um, that is, this is called the colon hex notation. And whenever you have just pure zeros, um, you can literally just shorthand it with two, two colons instead. Do, the, do people understand IPv6 versus IPv4? Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, so we can move on now. Um, so now, now, now we're getting into like the very technical things. Um, so now we're going to talk about um, subnetting, right? So a routable IP address class. There, there's four different IP address class. If you're talking about classful, um, you know, um, networking, there's four different class addresses. Class address A, B, C, and D. And and the value in that first octet. Remember, I, I was telling you about the octets. The, the value in the first octet, if it's in the range of one to one six, one twenty six, is class A. We skip 127. We skip 127 because that's a special address known as a loopback address, which is basically like the address of the host. You can't. You can't. That's not a routable. That's not a routable IP address. 127 is, uh, 127 in the first octet. That's not routable. Um, so 128 to 191. That's class B. 192 to 223. That's class C. And 224 to 239 is class D. Now. We have this thing known as a, um, this is known as a subnet mask. You know, this is, the subnet mask is basically, let me, let me pull up this definition I found. That was excellent. Um, it's a 32-bit number of, you know what, I'm going to come back to the subnet mask in the next slide. I think I have a better diagram for it. Um, and I'm going to come back to the CIDR notation in a minute, too, because it's also on the next slide. But essentially, when you take a look at the IP address, there's one thing that, you have to know, and it's that when you take a look at the IP address, it encodes two pieces of information. The first part is a network portion, the network with which the host belongs to, as well as the, um, the host itself, right? There's always that network and that host part of the IP address. And, um, and the subnet mask is the thing that actually separates the two, you know? And I'm going to give you an example. This may seem a little theoretical right now, but I'm going to give you an example to make it very clear. So let's start. I think, I think everyone who wants to learn subnetting like real carefully needs to know the power of twos, like basically like um, memorize it. I don't know, like, like store it on your phone, um, um, give flashcards, um, yeah, something so that, so that you, you know it, so that you know it cold. Um, Basically, now we're going to talk about that subnet mask that I was just telling you about. The subnet mask is basically, it, it's, it's also 32 bits. It's also 32 bits, you know, and it, it, it's a bunch of ones followed by zero. And, and if it's class um, A, then it's literally just eight ones followed by like 20, 24 zeros. If it's class B, it's, it's 16 ones followed by 16 zeros. And if it's class C, it's... Um, you know, um, what, what was this, 24, 1 followed by 0, right? The purpose of subnet, making a network and making it smaller is to, so that the network is scoped properly with the right number of hosts, as well as, um, you know, um, make, make it so that the network is, is more amenable. You don't want to, if you only have one, two hosts or two nodes on the network, you don't want, you don't want a network with like, I don't know, a thousand, that, that's scoped for like a thousand nodes, right? Um, so, so. But then again, these are classful subnets. There's also classless subnets, and this is where that CIDR notation comes in. The CIDR notation is basically, it, it defines a subnet mask. It defines a subnet mask. It basically tells you, hey, the, the subnet mask has literally 25 ones followed by 32 minus this number, number, 
32 minus 25 number of zeros. Does, does this make sense? Yes. Is this the same thing as limiting like a DNS pool with a limit IP range? I, I, it's some, something similar, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's a little more automated though, it's kind of like baked into TCP IP? Yeah, yeah, you, okay. you, these days you'll never need to do subnetting by hand, you know, it's, it's all handled automatically, but to understand what's really happening behind the scenes is, I think, it's worthwhile. But, but yes, yeah, subnetting is taking like a big network and breaking it into smaller networks that more size properly for your use case, yes. So if you have 50 devices on your home network, you'd probably do like a slider 16 or whatever? Yeah, yeah, something okay. like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so, so now, now we're gonna go through the example. Um, there, 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 there's this, um, there's two formulas that you really need to know. Two to the S is the number of subnets created, where S is the number of borrowed bits. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of what I mean. Just, just remember this for now. As well as the number of allocable IP addresses per subnet is two to the H minus two, where H is the number of hosts, right? The reason why you have to subtract two is because the network and broadcast addresses on any network are not yeah, they're not allocable. They're just not allocable. And I'll give you an example. This, is, this seems a little theoretical, but I'll give you an example right now. We have this, this network address right here. 192, 186, 30, and here's, 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 here's that classless subnet um, CIDR notation of 26, right? Let's break it down. Binary, right? Do people understand this concept right now? Breaking, uh, breaking 192, down to binary, 186 down to binary, three down to binary, and zero. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, now we have to take a look at the um, subnet mask, right? 26, right? This is eight, 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 that's 24, plus two, what's it? It's 26, right? 26, 26 ones. This is that concept of that um, borrow bit that I was just telling you about. See, you see, these two bits right here are, should be part of the host, but they have been converted and the, the network part grabbed the two bits right here. You see that? These two bits, the, 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 the 8, 8, 24, and then these two bits that should be part of the host have become part of the network, and that's the borrow bits that I was just telling you about, you know? So now, now we, 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 know, we, have, we know what S is and we know what H is. H, if this is S and this is H, um, we can calculate numbers. Number of created subnets, four subnets. Number of allocable IP address per subnet is two to the six minus two, which is 62. Now, now, now here it is. The first subnet ranges from 192, 186.3.0 to 192.8.186.3.63. But, but you gotta remember that the first IP address is the network address, that's not allocable. The last IP address is the broadcast address, that's also not allocable. So you have, you've broken down into four subnets. Each subnet is, has 62 allocable IP addresses, but the network address for all four subnets are 192.186.3.0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0,
like an IP address, like that's like each computer, each thing on a network has an IP address, but like I don't I don't know what subnet is. So so a subnet is basically let's say let's say you have you have one node or host on your comp on your network, right? And then, and then you have a you have a network that can host like a thousand ho hosts or nodes. Th that that's too big when you have one one node, right? So you have to break the network. So the the one one network has four subnets, and each of the subnets has six can 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 have sixty two hosts on it. You know, that that makes it so that you have like an IT department, right? They can have their um, network. They have like an HR department. They can have their network. So they're not all on this like one huge network. That that's you break it down. Let's say this is the network for the IT department, the okay. the, the the HR department, the the, the 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 I don't know the finance department. Um, the the, 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 yeah, yeah, you see what I'm saying. So, yeah, so it's like one company, and then a way to do it would be to have different departments having yes. different subnets. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Thank yes, you. yes. It's, it's for like protection as well, and also reducing the amount of noise that's happening, like going through the router. Yes. If the subnet can handle its own redirections or communication, it's not bottlenecking like all the other requests that are going out to the web. Yes, absolutely. Subnetting specific to IPv4? Um, I think so. I think uh, so. So when they're facing it out? Oh, uh, that, that's that's a question I'm not sure yet because it, the adoption of IPv6 is, is they've been saying for it's the past been, 10 years. 20 years. Yeah, it's been 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's another benefit of doing like internal subnets. Like a lot of companies have 192.168.6.3.0. That's not a unique IP that somebody would go to on the web. That's like an internet um, IP. Okay. Yeah. And that allows IP. Um, for to scale. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes, please. Uh, so I guess so today, in, like you have a network, you just in, in example, you divide, you create two four subnets, right? Yes. Yes. With, with this with this subnet mask of slash twenty six. Yes. So for example, if you have an IT department, let's say in a library, for example, a circulation, IT, youth services, everyone has its own. Yes. Yes. Um, are the hosts within the net, the whole network, can communicate between each other? The, they, they, they can. We'll, we'll talk about that. But but through routing the oh. networks, they, they can route the traffic, and the subnets can talk to each other. The hosts cannot talk to each other. The, it's the subnets that talk to each other. You see that? Okay. Well, how, how do you accomplish that? Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll oh. get to that. Yeah. Yes, please. Is that what the network and the broadcast addresses are responsible for? Yes, 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 yes. So you you have a you have a subnet. You you made a subnet, right? The broadcast address is only per that subnet. You can you can broadcast to all the nodes or hosts on that subnet, and that's what the broadcast address is. And the network address is basically saying this is a network, and and and, and here's the broadcast address. I can talk to all the hosts on this subnet. That's it. You know? Yeah. Okay. Last question: If you have a DHCP kind of a you provision IP address to DHCP. Yes. How do you know what subnet are you allocating? Um, yeah, let me write that down. Let me follow up with you. Let me follow up with you um, after the talk. Yeah, let me write that down. DHCP. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I may have to do a little research, but I'll follow up with you, sir. Um, this is what you were talking about, sir. Routing, right? What, what what is routing? Like 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 how you you've broken down into like subnets. How do how do net how do computers talk to each other if they're on two different subnets, right? You know, and it's 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 through this terminology called routing, and 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 it, it facilitates communication between subnets and networks. What does a router do? What does a router really do? It separates broadcast domains, right? You have a subnet, and that's called that's every node and host within that subnet is considered part of one um, one broadcast domain, right? So a router, its job is to separate um, uh, different subnets into broadcast domains, right? And this is really interesting in that the router, like like when you when you when you hear the term router, it operates at the OSI model level three, the network layer, and the TCP/IP model level two layer, the internet. So what does that mean? It means that this right here, this is pure hardware. This switch, they're working with frames at, at a level 
this, this is working with frames at level two of the OSI model, but when, you, when it comes to routing, it becomes IP addresses operating at level three, the network layer, and you route IP packets between different sub, subnets, you know? And, and of course, the routing router always has like a route, route, routing, routing table, always, right? But you also have to understand the routing protocols like BGP yes. and, and all those to apply this uh, to, to, the, to the network because the, the router, you know, facilitates the, the, the routing. Yeah, absolutely. It relies on different protocols. Absolutely. And they may be di different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. I didn't get into that level of detail, but the sir is correct in that um, there's different different types of routing protocols, BGP as one as well as other that will actually BIP, BIP is another protocol IP. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Um, okay, so so I think I think I think I think um, we have to what time is it? I think we have to move a bit faster if that's okay. Um, so, so this is something I just want to want to um, uh, you know this is goes back to what that last point how do how do networks talk to each other there's also this concept of network address translation right here's the inter here's here's the internet right here that's a network here's your private network right here right you know here's some server on the internet you want to talk to but this is a private and here's your host it has a private IP address right. Right here is something known as a bastion or whatever in, in AWS, they call it a bastion. It's a public IP address, right? So if you wanna send traffic from the source, from the host, out to the internet, right? Out to the internet, from the source, out to the internet, um, the network address translation will convert the private IP address into the public IP address. You see that, see that? And then send it out. Let's say you wanna go the other way, coming from the internet to your private network, right? You, your source is the internet, right? Source, and the destination is the um, public IP address, right? You send traffic through here. The network address translation will convert the um, public IP address into the private IP address, and that's how you bring um, traffic from the internet to your local network. Does that make sense? Network address translation. Okay. Um, TCP versus UDP um, operates at OSI model level four, the transport layer, as well as the TCP IP model level three, the, tra the transport layer. They're both called the transport layer. You see that? Let me go back again. See? Um, transport layer, the transport layer. Um, you know, um, you know it, it hosts end-to-end -end communication by the internet. I've actually met the... Um, the engineer that built this thing, um, Vince Surf, personally twice. He's probably in his like 80s now. Um, when I when I met him a couple years ago, he was he was in very good um, health. Um, and, and the difference between the two is that you know, TCP is connection oriented. UDP is connectionless. TCP the data remains intact. UDP it's not guaranteed that the packets will reach the destination at all. I mean you know, it's slower. Um, this is faster, this is more heavyweight, and this is more lightweight. TCP is used for, say, email, web browsing, as well as UDP is used for voiceover, IP, and music streaming. Operating at level four of the OSI model and level three of the, of the um, TCP model. Okay. As well as, and, and then now we're moving toward, like, towards the top, top la layer stuff, sockets, right? Sockets are what as web developers, you're mostly going to be working with all the lower level stuff. Like, like I just went through, like, I try my best to give you, like, an idea of the lower level stuff behind sockets, but you're mostly just working with sockets as a web developer, you know, and sockets, you know, are um, also called the connections endpoint if you're a web developer. Um, that's that term that they use a lot, endpoint. And what, what is a socket? It's a transfer protocol. It's either it's TCP or UDP, an IP address as well as a port. That's what you as web developers are mostly working with. Um, and, and, the, and then the last thing I want to go over is DNS. Um, you know, like, like when, whenever you put into a website into, into Google, um, you know, like, let's say Yahoo, right? The .com is called the root domain. Yahoo.com is a subdomain of, of the root domain. And www.yahoo.com is a subdomain of Yahoo.com. And DNS, domain name system, is, 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 is a hierarchy, right? You have the root as well as different, you, you, you different tranches, you know? And so like when you type in 
Wikipedia into Google, basically it, it, it pings the root server, hey, um, uh, do, do you have www.wikipedia.org? It says, no. Okay, try, try, try org. Um, okay, let me go to the org.name server. Do, do you have www.wikipedia.org? Nope. And then now it goes, 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 goes down the level of tranches until it finds it, you know? So the root domain, the subdomain, as well as the subdomain. It, it starts from the root and then goes down to the different tranches to find, okay? Okay, so now we can do, do a, um, now we, did you, um, we can do a um, demo. Um, we, we can, we can, let's, let's do some demo. Um, if you have a computer, we can um, get started. Um, can, can you see my, um, um, okay, I need to, um, I need to, um, um, yeah, so. Sorry guys, um, give me one second. I'm trying to bring the terminal over. Ah, oh, here, here it is, here it is, okay, okay. All right, so I think, I think, I think that we'll just get started. So every, t I just wanna go over some commands that you all may be useful, uh, may, may, may be helpful if you ever wanna, um, uh, you know, um, uh, do networking. So let's do some of the basics, I think, um, um, let's start with ping. I think ping, you can, whenever you have like network connectivity issues, the first, first thing you should try to ping it, right? So man ping, um, let's just do, to take a look. What, what, what the, huh? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, can you see it now? Um, so, so, so the first command I want to show you is ping. Um, you know, it uses ICMP um, to basically ping a server. Like, like whenever you have like um, network connectivity issues, this is the first thing you need to do: ping the server and see if you can establish a connection. Um, you know, and, and so now we can try. Um, now, now there are other commands that you can use, right? If you know, if, if ping is is one way, but there's actually two other commands that also do the same thing as ping. Um, um, I think, I think, I think. Um, let's let's get an IP address right now. Let's say. Um, let me do a, um, and so now, let, let me try the command um, uh, dig. dig. Dig will also do the same thing, but instead of an IP address, it will, you can try a um, host, like, like a, just a website. Let me see if this works. See, dig will give you the, um, basically a lot of networking information about Google. You know that it's like the IP address. So now, now that we got an IP address, let's try ping. Um, I'm trying to ping Google right now, and um, yeah, you see, you see, we, we're getting a connection, right? So, 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 so that that that's ping, um, and 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 basically, dig. Uh, uh, let me show you dig one more time. Dig will basically do, do network address translation for you, uh, or not network address translation, DNS. It's basically like a DNS. It converts like a um, like a like a like a you know name down to like the um, it gives you the IP address, right? But dig is not the only web, only um, command that you can do to do DNS, such as um, NS lookup. I think also does the same. Uh, uh, dig minus a. Give you the uh, close reference. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, uh, .250.65.228. Yeah, yeah, it works. Um, so, so. You can also ping the domain name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, and then, and then you can also try the command host. I think, I think host will also do the same thing. Um, yeah, see, see, so, so there's basically three commands that will do DNS for you. There's dig, there's NS lookup, as well as host that will do DNS lookup for you. Um, they're all, they're all a little bit different, but th those are the three. Ping will ping, um, anything um, to, to establish connection. And the last command I, want, I wanted to check out was like trace route. Um, okay, so clear. Let me get that, let me get, let me do um, DNS lookup again, right? Dig, I got the IP address and then I'm gonna do um, trace route. This, this is routing, right? Remember you, you talk about communicating between networks, well now we're doing routing, um, 142.250.0. 65.228, um, yeah, it basically tells you, it tells you like the hops, 
along the gateway to go from this computer to Google, right? All the all the like all the like gateways as well as like like uh, hardware that the that the packet has to travel to go from here to Google, um, and that's what Trace Route will do. Um, I I was going to um, do um, networking with Python, but I think I ran out of time. I had some resources here for you all. Um, you know, you can you can you can ask me for the slide deck if you want, but. Otherwise, I want to thank um, Jason Dion um, from Udemy, um, Kendall Giles from, um, and Greg, Dr. K from, um, from Virginia Tech. They've been very helpful in helping me, and um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, any, any other questions? Do you have any examples about sockets? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I had a, I had an example. Um, I was working on it this morning, but I, I don't have like an in-depth example that I could share with you. An example of what? Like a socket, like how sockets are talking, like a client and a server talking to each other. Um, I, I, um, I, I, um, I'll, I'll follow up with you. I'll follow up with you. Yeah, let me let me write that. What were those Python examples that you had? Right, 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 right. So. Um, so the thing with Python is that, yeah, networking can get pretty deep. Um, you know, Python has like native libraries and tools and packages to do networking. Async IO socket, right? There's, there's a native packet, packet for sockets. Um, if you want to work with sockets, um, SSL, select, etc. Um, you, you can do stuff natively with Python, but, but. Um, there's also external libraries that you can use too. External libraries in addition to what's native in Python. Um, you know, um, there's this async IO that I was just telling you about, Diesel, Pulsar, Twisted. I've heard about Twisted and, and as well as some of other libraries that you can go very deep into if you want to develop like super, super complex networking programs. Yes. Are you going to show your slides? Um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take you, I'll, I'll send you to you. I'll take your um, email, yeah, yeah. The slides are also um, attached to your session. Yes, yes, the they website. are. A nice PDF. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, well, um, I, I uh, do we have that? Or just the access to the slides? It's it's usually, the slides are posted after the session. Okay. Oh, okay. And um, and, and um, you know, I want to I want to um, and the last thing I want to say is I want to thank everyone. Um, yeah, it, it took me many years to figure all this out. Um, and I think that. You know, with any technology, the last point I want to make is that if you keep trying and, and you keep trying over time, there's just no way that you won't understand it. So, um, yeah, I think you just got to keep grinding if there's any top concept or topic or framework that you want to learn. So if you just keep going, it'll work out. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah.